Hello Reimaginers, it's RJ and Chester, and we're back with another kooky craft. What craft are we making today? Well, today we're going to do something a little bit different. Every year I make lion-oriented gifts for the kids I know. I did a video a couple years ago about making lion stick puppets, and then last year I got the bright idea to make little lion stuffies and that was way too much. So this year, I'm gonna try and tone it down a little bit, and I'm gonna show you a craft that is pretty simple to make. Are you sure about that? What, this is simple. You've got like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you got over 10 things here. How is that simple? Okay, it's simpler than stuff I've done in the past. How about that? Yeah, I'll accept that. So, like with every year around this time, it's going to be lion themed, and they're also going to be puppet oriented. <gasps> Yay! I love making puppets! Wait, it's not going to be a sock puppet. I don't see any socks. Nope, we're making clothespin puppets. What? Yep, which means the first thing you're going to need on your list are clothespins. These here I got are a little bit thicker than your average clothespin. The width is wider. And they work really nicely for clothespin puppets because this will turn into the mouth of our puppet. So that way you've got a little bit of a stronger grip on that. Other than that, we're also going to use some cardstock paper. It is, it's stuck, I can't get it. I can't get it off of my, my thing here, hold on. Cardstock paper, and this is what we're going to use to draw the skeleton base for our lion. On the flip side of this, I actually have a template for a lizard that I tested this out on, and it worked really well. Aw, that's cute. How come we're not doing the lizard? Because we're doing lions. We've been through this. We do it every year. We're doing lions. Okay, fine, we're doing lions. And then I got a nice pair of shear scissors here, because we're going to need these to cut out our fabric, some kind of light brown felt fabric. I got a ton. It's left over from some project that I can't remember now. Some red here, we're going to cut up this red and use it for our lion's mane. And I also have yellow yarn that we'll, we will be using. Wait, the yellow yarn isn't for the lion's mane? No, it's going to be for something else. I'm really confused. For sticky foam core for the eyes, always my favorite thing to use when making any kind of eye, whether it's for a cutesy little craft or for puppets. A little bit of white out here, we're gonna use these to put in highlights on the eyes. And pencil and thick sharpie to draw on both the cardstock and the fabric. And last but not least, my favorite weapon of choice when making crafts, the hot glue gun. Can I touch it? Yeah, it's, it's not plugged in, you're fine. Nice. So Chester is going to plug in our hot glue gun here. Be careful, buddy, okay? And while he's doing that, I'm going to start drawing the body and the head of this lion onto our cardstock paper. All right, we're gonna start off with three basic circles. I'm gonna put a small circle here, and that'll be the front part of the body. And then we'll put a large circle in the back for the back of the body. And we're gonna connect these two circles together for the torso. So this is specifically the torso of our lion body here. And it, you want it to be almost a bean shape. Don't worry if you have to redraw because this part will be covering with the fabric, so you shouldn't be seeing any of it after this initial drawing phase. And then, since this is the front of our body, we don't want to make the head that much bigger than this. So we're going to come over here. I'm going to mark how the width of that so I can make the head. That way we don't have our head that much bigger. That'll be the head of our lion. Now, what we're going to do here is this is actually going to be cut right down the middle because there's going to be two different sections. The top section will be the front part of the mouth of the puppet and the bottom section will be on the bottom. So I'm going to go through here and make these top and bottom mouths. And then on the top of the head, I'm also going to make room for the ears. And at this point, we are good to cut out both of these. So I've cut out our body here. And before I actually cut out the head, we are going to make a second layer of cardstock on the body. This part's going to be pretty important because we want it to be nice and thick. 
so it doesn't bend when being used. So I'm going to just carefully trace the part that we cut out for the torso on the second part of the cardstock here. And now I'm going to come back through and cut out the head. So at this point we got the two layers of the torso of our lion. We've got the top of the head, which at the moment kind of looks like the face of Freddy Fazbear, and we've got the bottom mouth of the head as well. Sorry, that was out of the frame for a moment. Your nails are cute! Oh thanks! It's Chat Noir and Ladybug. That new episode made me cry. Yes, it made me cry too. So next thing I'm going to do is I've got our brown fabric here. And I am going to trace, where'd, where'd the bottom lip go? I had it, and then I put it down and it's gone! No, where did it go? I found it, we're good. It was, it was underneath the head. But what we're going to do is I'm gonna put down the torso and the head and the bottom lip and trace that on our fabric here. And we are going to trace that with our Sharpie. I'm gonna get my handy dandy scissors out again and cut out the fabric. So we've got all of our matching pieces. I'm gonna put all these together. So we got head, torso, and bottom lip. And now what I'm actually going to do is use the extra fabric I have here and make some of the paws. So I'm going to fold this one piece in half. I'm gonna make four small paw shapes. This time, I'm going to go through with the sheer scissors to cut these out. Okay, so the last thing we're going to do before we start putting some pieces together is make the nose and the eye shape. So I got our, my black foam core here. Two circles for the eyes and I want to keep in mind the size of the head as well. I'm going to do two small circles for the eyes and then one upside down triangle shape for the nose. Or kind of like an upside down heart. And just very gently cut those out because these pieces are really tiny. Okay. At this point, we have all the pieces ready to get some gluing done. All right, is that glue gun ready to go? Ow! Yeah, it's ready. It's, it's leaking glue. All right, step aside, bud. This is gonna get messy. Ugh. You don't wash from a distance? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the first thing we're gonna do is I am going to glue my three layers of the body together. And then I'm gonna glue the top layer on right over it. Make sure when you're gluing the layers to put the little pieces that still have some markings from your marker underneath it. So that way when you're looking at it from the top, it looks nice and smooth and not wonky. We've got our body glued on. Pull off the extra glue pieces here. 
Next, I'm going to glue the head and the bottom part of the mouth. Very hot. I can I can feel the heat of the glue through the cardstock paper as I'm trying to squish this bottom lip down. So make sure you're extremely careful with the hot glue gun when you're doing this because it can get pretty nasty. Ow. Okay, I'm gonna let that cool for a bit. So while I'm letting that part cool, I am going to attach on the eyes onto our head. And for that, you just peel off the sticky back. You got the foam core with the sticky back on it, which again is one of my favorite ones, because then you can just easily peel and stick. There you go, he's got a bit of a cartoonish face right now. And now I'll take a little bit of the white out, and then I'm going to paint on some highlights onto the black parts of the eyes of the lion. The great part about using white out is that it'll dry very quickly, and especially if you're working with foam, it makes it stand out very nice. So he's got a very goofy lion face, which is kind of the goal I'm going for here. It is for a child. We want it to be silly, not creepy looking. Ooh, ooh, can I put on whiskers? You want to put on whiskers? Yeah. All right. I'm going to let Chester draw some whiskers onto our face with the Sharpie. Go for it. Yeah. Be, be very careful. I'll, I'll hold this part. Turn the Sharpie so you're using the tip part of it there. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, have them look like they're coming out of the nose onto the mouth. Excellent. That looks really good, Chester. Yay! I stuck my finger in the white out though. I just noticed that. <laughs> He's got a little extra highlight there, so I'm gonna have to fix that. I think it's safe to say that we need to let the white out on the head dry for a little bit. So while we are letting that dry, let's start working on the mane. So for the mane, we've got this nice long fabric here, and we're actually going to be cutting strips out of it. So Chester, if you want to hold that, mm -hmm. I'm going to start cutting strips out with our sheer scissors here. All right, so we've got some lovely strips of lion mane. I'm going to set those to the side for now. And next up is I'm going to need that yellow yarn. This yellow yarn we are actually going to use for the, where is the end of this thing? Oh. What happened to this yarn? Where is the end of it? <laughs> it just it goes on forever. Oh wait, I found it, I found it, we're good. <laughs> so we're actually going to use this yarn for the tail and the legs of our lion. So that way it's got like cute little dangly legs coming down. So if you wanna hold that there, Chester, I'm going to cut four pieces for our legs here. And we want them about the same length, if you can hold that there, bud. Thank you. Okay, you're good. Yeah. Yarn tastes disgusting. All right, now it is back to gluing. All the last steps are gluing. Oh man. So, next up what we're going to do is we gotta glue all of our pieces together. So first up, I'm actually going to glue together the lion paws. And first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the end of one of our legs here and stick it on one piece of the lion paw fabric. And then we'll up glue the other piece on so it sticks together. Just let it stick right on the paw. Oopsie. <laughs> it's very stringy because I left it on for a while. Make note of that. I don't, I don't mind the stringiness, but I know some people don't like picking off the strings, so. If you don't want your glue gun to be stringy, don't leave it on while you're working on other parts of the project. All right, so here is one little leg and paw. I'm going to glue the rest of the legs and the paws together, and then Chester will be good to add some little claw marks onto our paws here. Oh, look at those. How adorable. Woo! Now, it's time to glue some more stuff. Wow. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is glue the pieces of our lion mane on the front top head of our lion. 
And we'll do a little bit on the bottom lip too. Not, not, not a touch, just, just, just a little, just a little. And now you can tell a couple of our line main pieces need some trimming here. So I'm going to do a little trimming around them. All right, now we're finally at the part where we use the clothespin. So the first thing we are going to do is get our mouthpieces onto the clothespin here. So pick which part of the clothespin you want to be the top lip and which you want to be the bottom lip. And then from there, you will hot glue whatever piece. I'm going to make this part my top lip. So I'm going to put some glue on the back of my mane here. I left a little space open in the back amongst all the mains. I'm going to open up the clothespin and stick it right into the glue. I'm going to hold it pretty still. I'll probably have to count to... I'm going to hold this still, and this time I want you to count to 30, Chester. 30! Uh, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. Yeah, that's right. I can speak Spanish too. I'm a bilingual dog. Alright, so now we've got the head of our lion done. Where, where, oh, here's the body. So for the body, we are going to glue the body onto the back part of the clothespin here. I'll put it up right up against it so it's completely connecting with the head. All right, now the next step from here is to glue our legs onto the sides of the body. All right, we're also gonna get the tail on too while we're at it. So I'm gonna glue the tail right onto his bottom here. So now the back of your, bottom part of your line should look like this. That way when you turn it sideways, it should look like that. Now to make sure that these legs stay on, we are going to create another felt piece to glue into the back here to keep all of this together. All right, Chester, hold that still. Don't burn your mouth on it. Ow! Okay, so at the moment, the back is. So now we are on to the very last step. Please, no more gluing. No, nope. we're actually gonna take his tail here and unravel the yarn so it's all fluffy. Ooh. And here we have it. Our clothespin line puppet is done. Oh, I love his cute little dangly legs. And the best part is, when you pinch the clothespin, his mouth moves. So he can talk like a puppet can. Yeah, you, you always want to move the bottom jaw on a puppet, not never the top. Or else they, 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 call, that, they call that flipping the lid. This guy doesn't flip the lid. That, that means he's a 10 out of 10. No lid flipping for this fella. Thank you for joining our kooky craft. If you like this video, go ahead and put a pause up and press that like button. And don't forget to comment and subscribe as well. We did a whole bunch of kooky craft activities over the summertime, which include animal frat facts from our resident animal naturalist, Bambi the polar bear. Yeah, why wasn't she helping with this one? Where is she? <laughs> oh, this is why we don't eat the sushi that Lucy makes. No. Oh. oh, that sucks. I feel better, Bambers. Not one word. Oh. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. Go ahead and try making your own at home if you feel brave enough. Now I gotta make some for all the kids I know. How many is that gonna be? 30. At least 30. Oh, we got a long week ahead of us.